Good day, beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is a momentous occasion as we gather together to receive a message from Archbishop Vigano, a message described as a great bombshell that carries profound implications for the future of our world. Before we delve into this revelation, let us begin with a moment of prayer, seeking God's guidance and asking the Holy Spirit to enlighten our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. O God, who has taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that by the gift of the same Spirit, we may always be truly wise and ever rejoice in His consolation, through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Archbishop Vigano says false accusations serve as a tactic employed by those who seek to eliminate an adversary whom they fear and cannot confront honestly. In my case, I am deemed inconvenient by both the influential figures within the deep-rooted church and the Burgundy infection. I have consistently exposed their scandals and cover-ups, beginning with the McCarrick case. Similarly, I pose a threat to the deep state, which has enjoyed the Holy See's complicity, along with the majority of the global episcopate, in various events over recent years. A dissenting bishop, especially one who articulates reasoned grievances based on undeniable facts, risks challenging the official narrative surrounding the alleged rejuvenation of the Church under this pontificate, as well as the pandemic deception and widespread vaccination. Moreover, even the recent crisis between Russia and Ukraine reveals a significant alignment of the globalist elite, NATO, the American Deep State, the European Union, the World Economic Forum, the media apparatus, and the Vatican. Putin's intervention in Ukraine is viewed as a threat to the New World Order, which they are determined to neutralize, even if it means instigating a global conflict. Therefore, if I were to identify a decisive turning point on the ecclesiastical front, it would undoubtedly coincide with my exposure of the network of complicity and the scandals involving corrupt clergy and prelates, which Pope Francis has intentionally and persistently attempted to conceal. On the civil front, it appears that the threshold was crossed when I issued my appeal for the Church and the World three years ago in May 2020. Through this appeal, I denounce the danger posed by the silent coup orchestrated through the pretext of a health emergency. The impending crisis involving energy, food, and warfare has been extensively described by the World Economic Forum and the United Nations, contributing to the disconcerting scenarios we currently face. When the day comes, not too distant in the future, and a tribunal judges these criminals and their collaborators within the institutions of numerous Western nations, these documents will serve as evidence of the premeditation behind the greatest coup d'etat in history. Similarly, in matters concerning the Church, they will demonstrate that the doctrinal and moral deviation stemming from the Second Vatican Council provided the foundation for the corruption of clergy and the simultaneous delegitimization of the shepherd's authority. Let us not forget that revolutionary processes have consistently exploited devices and weaknesses of their representatives, aiming to dismantle the state and weaken the church. Archbishop Vigano reminds us that false accusations are often employed as a means to silence and eliminate those who speak the truth and stand up against corruption and injustice. In our world today, we see the rise of powerful forces that seek to suppress the gospel and undermine the values we hold dear. The Archbishop warns us of the deep church and the Burgundy and Cabal, which have been complicit in scandals and cover-ups within the church itself. He also speaks of the deep state, which has found alliances within the Holy See and various global institutions. As Christians, we must be vigilant and discerning. We cannot blindly follow the narratives that are imposed upon us by those who seek to control and manipulate. We must be like the Bereans in the Book of Acts, who examined the scriptures daily to verify the teachings they received. Our faith must be grounded in the truth of God's word, and we should not hesitate to question and challenge falsehoods that contradict his teachings. Archbishop Vigano's message goes beyond ecclesiastical matters. He highlights the alignment of global powers in various geopolitical crises, such as the recent Russian-Ukrainian conflict. The forces at play, including the globalist elite, NATO, the deep state, 
and influential institutions, all seem to converge against anything that threatens their vision of a new world order. We must understand that these events are not isolated incidents but part of a larger agenda. In the face of these challenges, we must stand firm in our faith and take action. Archbishop Vigano calls for us to be courageous witnesses of the truth, even when it is inconvenient or unpopular. We should not be afraid to expose corruption, speak out against injustice, and defend the sanctity of life and the family. We are called to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth, shining the love and truth of Christ in every aspect of our lives. The Archbishop reminds us that revolutionary processes that seek to dismantle the Church and the state have always relied on the vices and weaknesses of their representatives. Therefore, we must also strive for personal holiness and integrity. We cannot combat the darkness around us if we are entangled in sin and compromise. Let us repent, seek God's forgiveness, and strive for a life of holiness, relying on the grace of the sacraments and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Archbishop Vigano's message calls us to hope. He speaks of the triumph of Our Lady's Immaculate Heart, a promise that brings us great comfort and assurance. No matter how dire the circumstances may seem, we know that God is ultimately in control. Our faith teaches us that the gates of hell will not prevail against the Church. We must hold on to this hope and trust that God will bring about His plan of salvation and justice. As we navigate the challenges of our time, let us heed the words of Archbishop Vigano and be faithful witnesses of Christ's truth and love. Let us pray for wisdom, discernment, and courage. May we stand strong in our convictions, rooted in the Word of God, and may our lives reflect the hope and joy that come from knowing Christ. May God bless you all. Amen. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6, Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you.